this, let's replace. We should see my new pod coming up and it's running. Yeah, he's living a little longer than last time. And yeah, we have show. nice. Cool. <laughs> so now comes the complex part. Uh, we need to escape. What's up, Carlos? How's it going, Ignacio? Hey, it's great to have you again, coming from Halborn, diving into some more cloud security, diving into some more DevOps, diving into all the hot new modern infrastructure as code, production, continuous integration, continuous deployment, all these awesome things uh, and how they can go wrong. <laughs> hey, I, we've been chatting about a ton of stuff between AWS services, between GitHub Actions, between uh, Terraform. And now I think one that I'm probably the most excited to get into because I know, man, this is your bread and butter, uh, Kubernetes and this incredible, crazy thing that could do so much sweet stuff, but again, could probably potentially be misconfigured and then taken advantage of. Uh, so I'd love to, I don't know, maybe get a little bit of your hot take. What the heck is Kubernetes? Where did it come from? How did it come to life? And then, of course, any show and tell, any demos you're willing to bring. Yeah, so first let's cover a little bit about Kubernetes, why it's used and all of that for all the people that are not familiar. And then we're going to dive into the GitOps padding, why people use GitOps and what it is. So first off, Kubernetes is just a orchestration. Well, I say just, it's like the orchestration system Massive. for containers. Uh, everyone is using it nowadays, especially like in, in startups and things like that, where they want to be cool and use all the passwords. So yeah, Kubernetes is essentially a system to run your containers. You specify what you want and Kubernetes makes sure that you have the correct amount of replicas. Uh, you can have them with state and without state. There's lots of different ways to run your containers inside. I load balance between them, auto scale. I think that's probably the main reason why people use it a lot. It's very easy to configure auto scaling uh, for companies that are small and might have to grow really quick, like scale up within hours if like something goes viral on, on the internet or something like that and all of a sudden they get a, a ton of traffic, it, it would be really useful for them to like scale up instantly. And to do that, you're probably going to have to use containers if you want to do it fast. So Kubernetes is like the best option for that. For that. And moving on to GitOps. GitOps is a paradigm for CICD stuff that allows us to keep our source of truth in a GitHub repository and then have a system that monitors that repository and applies whatever changes are uh, in the repository to your systems. So in the previous video, Carlos was talking about Atlantis. Atlantis uses the GitOps paradigm. Ooh. And today we're going to be talking about GitOps paradigm for Kubernetes, specifically Argo CD. Ignacio, can I, can I ask you a question, man? A, a very personal question. Um, how much do you like or dislike the ease of use of Kubernetes? I, I love Kubernetes. In, <laughs> I've been to KubeCons and, and everything. The community is great. Uh, Security-wise, it's super interesting. Like you, you have from web stacks, like the, the website kind of issues, uh, you have cloud kind of issues, you have Linux kernel kind of issues. <laughs> so it's like so diverse, like, like the thread patterns in, in Kubernetes are so diverse. It's super cool. I, I really love it. Yeah, man, I was asking this because um, actually when I got into Kubernetes, I found, I found that it was, Kubernetes is doing very complicated stuff, but at the end looks very simple, but because at the end just looks like containers with a kind of complex, um, with a kind of complex YAMLs or configurations or, or command lines. So, so I know that a lot of people struggle learning about Kubernetes, how it works, the, the internals and everything. And I'm going to be honest, like the most funniest memes I have seen in Twitter have always been about Kubernetes. Kubernetes. So, yeah. so I was curious about your opinion on that. <laughs> There's that, that Twitter account, Miminetes. Yeah. That's so good. It I haven't heard best. of that one. You, you have to check it out. I gotta so look good. it up. <laughs> cool. Should we get with a little demo about uh, Argo CD? Let's do it. So what I've done here is I've created a cluster for myself, and then I've installed Argo CD on the cluster. Argo CD, as we've said, is a GitOps tool. It will allow us to configure a GitHub repository, and then Argo will be monitoring it. And every so often, if there's any changes, it will apply them to your cluster. So essentially, we will be using Helm. Helm is a templating system for uh, Kubernetes manifests. So we're able to have like variables in our manifest to make it easier to have like the same manifest for production and developer, uh, development, like different environments. So Argo CD will monitor that GitHub repository that contains the, the manifests and apply them to our cluster. In our case, we have two things here, Argo CD workflows, which is pointing to this repository right here, Argo CD apps. And if we go ahead and look into the Argo CD apps repository, uh, this one, 
and we look at the home chart inside the templates there's this nginx template and it is an argo project uh, kind of resource uh, the kind is application so essentially what we're saying here is that we want to create one application in argo cd so it's a bit tricky here because we're using Argo CD to create its own applications. So people call this application of applications. Essentially, we're telling GitHub, uh, we're telling Argo CD to automatically check for its own configuration. And this configuration is telling it like, okay, go ahead and create a, an application that monitors this other repository. So here you would have like a, a YAML file for each application your team has and all of them pointing to the different repositories. So you don't have to configure this like manually inside Argo CD, which would be like not so cool uh, you're doing it like through GitOps. Oh. You're, you're configuring your GitOps system through GitOps. so if we go ahead and look at our nginx argo cd uh, which is our application nginx test it's pointing to this repo we can see that we have also a helm, t a helm chart and in here we have more things like for example we have a, a kubernetes deployment and this is what i was talking about that this is like a template there's a lot of ifs and like values that you get from variables of that uh, we're not really too interested in the actual semantics of this that would be for like a, a kubernetes course something like that but essentially what we're doing is creating this other application and then what we were seeing is the configuration of this application which is just running right here uh, the image is getting it from the values and if we check the values we should see that that it's running the Nginx image. So this application is basically creating a lot of things that Kubernetes creates to make sure that your deployment is stable, like replica sets and all of that. And then at the end, we will have a pod, which consists of one container, which has the, the image uh, engines. So a lot of weird things just to run engines, basically. So from an attacker perspective, this repository is really powerful. Uh, this repository, yeah. whatever you put in main here, in the main branch, it's getting deployed in Kubernetes uh, without any other checks. So we do have branch protection enabled uh, right here. We do get a warning because we're not running in an enterprise uh, or organization GitHub team that it won't be enforced, but we're going to pretend that, that it will be enforced. Uh, and then the thing is we can bypass branch protection in other ways. Uh, in this case, we, we've already showcased the, the GitHub actions by auto approval of a PR in one of our videos in the series. Yeah. So we're going to show a PR hijack, which we also mentioned, but we didn't showcase. So I had Carlos create an Apple request. So there's this pull request. This is green because branch protection is not enforced, but normally it would be red because there's no approvals. And Carlos has just changed one of the files. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and pull his branch. So what we're going to be doing is compromising the cluster by bypassing branch protection. And we're going to try to get Kubernetes admin directly uh, because Argo CD is running, uh, is creating stuff in, in Kubernetes. Normally it, it is configured as a Kubernetes admin. So if we manage to compromise the node where Argo CD is running, there should be a token that has Kubernetes permissions uh, for administrator. So we're going to copy this code right here. I'll explain it in a second and just paste it in one of these files in the chart. So we're creating a pod. Uh, this is from Bishop Fox's bad pod article. Uh, I think you've showcased this in, in another video. I have, yeah. Yeah. So essentially, we're creating a privileged pod with all the things set to true. So it shares the network, shares the PID, and shares the IPC. And then this is a reverse shell that connects back to my machine. And it also mounts the host file system to, to the container. So we should be able to take over the Docker socket, uh, which is a, a fairly typical way to privilege escalate in Kubernetes and, and any container system. Uh, we will see the, there's a bit of a hiccup here because uh, EKS, so AWS's Kubernetes like managed clusters, are not running Docker anymore. They're running Containerd. So it's a bit tougher, mm -hmm. but we'll get over that. Sweet. So we're adding the new change to our home chart, and then we're going to do a commit, and we're going to push to Carlos's branch. That should push. And now we'll go back here. There should be my new change. Now I would be able to go into the changes and review this with an approval. This would make it so now we have an approval in this PR, and since there is no dismissal of stale, like stale reviews, we are able to just go ahead and merge this to, to main. And this way we would have bypassed branch protection. And now we should go back to Argo CD. And if we go back to our applications, Argo CD is configured by default for every three minutes, going to the repo and checking. 
So what we're going to do is just click on sync and replace to make sure that it, it synchronizes it. And this should be syncing. It will kill the previous pod, create a new one, and we should receive a shell in this listener, hopefully. Hopefully. That's so cool, though. I like the display, hey, showing you the pods that are up in, in Argo. I saw our Everything Allowed pod popped up, but then it went away. Did it die? or Probably died. Yeah. Let's try again. But, now, this uh, synchronize is just you doing it manually to have it uh, to, like speed up yeah. waiting because it'll yeah, happen to, automatically. To sync. Uh, for some reason, that pod is dying, and I don't know why. Oh, oh I did get a connection, connection, and it died. Okay. I don't know if it's maybe because I'm doing the SSL thing. Uh, maybe I try without that. Yeah, let's try without that. So okay. instead of using this image, I'm just going to use an Ubuntu image. I'm guessing that Ubuntu has Netcat, so regular Netcat, and I can do something like this. Um, I don't think Ubuntu is going to have Netcat with the flag E. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to attack E. You could do a bash reverse shell thing, but when, at this point, you get into the semantics of reverse shells. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. Let's try uh, a bash reverse shell. This should work. Uh, we have a shell executing this, and then here I just I, do. I will put bash in te, instead of sh uh, in both, just yeah, to make it better. Yeah. Let's put it in both. Yeah, I tend to trust that more too. Cool. So save that. Uh, let's start listening here. Let's commit this and push it. Okay, back in here. There should be the other branch and i'm going to create manually a pull request open pull request uh, to main yes i'm just going to merge it without having to bypass because it's not enforced but we would have to bypass branch protection i mean we already being admin of a repo and clicking merging is also bypass yeah it's true technically <laughs> <laughs> so my listener is listening right yes good and if i sync this let's replace we should see my new pod coming up, and it's running. Yeah, he's living a little longer than last time. And yeah, we have nice. Cool. <laughs> so now comes the complex part. Uh, we need to escape. Currently, we're in a container. It has privileged mm -hmm. access to the machine, but it's not the machine. So right, because you're in the container itself, yeah, exactly. not the host. First thing I'm going to do is cheroot to, to host. So yeah, we're in the host now uh, mounted in the in the root directory uh, then we need to install wget because it, well maybe now we're in ubuntu ubuntu probably has wget yeah we have wget cool. so we're going to be getting this tool called nerdctl and this tool will allow us to interact with container dig clusters so no, no clusters uh, sockets sorry so that way we can do like the typical socket Docker escape, but with ContainerD. So I'm just going to unzip this. Oh, it's so convenient that I have all, all the commands here. Oh yeah, copy paste is the way to do it. <laughs> and now the interesting stuff happens. Let me check if nerdctl is executable, it is. So I can just execute it. And we're first going to do a PS, which in Docker will list all the containers in this machine. So here are all the containers that are running in this specific node. Uh, the cluster that we're in has three nodes. I configured the pod to specifically run in this one because I know Argo CD was running this one. And now we're interested in a container called application controller. So I'm looking for application controller in here. Oh, there it is, very bottom, application controller okay. zero. So my guess is this is one line, right? Yeah, agreed. <laughs> yeah, with, with the text so so big, it's difficult. So copying this and pasting it in my next command. This is the ID of the container that is running the application controller. We're interested in application controller because it's the container that has the service account that is a Kubernetes admin. So now we're just going to run an exec of bin bash in that container. So now we should be in that container. Mm, I see an error. No. Does that not so have bash? Please tell me they didn't break my demo by Maybe making SH. this container. Let's try SH. Maybe they did it uh, with no shell. Oh, maybe my demo broke completely because of AWS, uh, Argo CD making their containers distroless. Do we have the right container? Should we grep for application controller just in case we got the wrong one on accident? Uh, yeah, we can do that. Okay, so there are we, two. Application controller zero. We might have grabbed the wrong one. Yeah, probably the wrong one. Let's try again. So copy Look that. Look at that. Live troubleshooting, debugging. <laughs> We're going to get it. Ah, um. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in Argo City. We're in Argo City. <laughs> cool. So now it's it's really easy to get. We, we didn't actually even need a reversal. 
we could have just a uh, run cut directly, but uh, we're currently just uh, showing like reading the token for this service account in this pod, and this would be our token. So now we can go ahead and just exit this shell. Uh, we can actually, yeah, let's do it from here. Uh, we should be able to copy this. And don't forget to remove your exit at the very end. I think you ended that capital Q. Ooh, true. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Save me a ton of troubleshooting. I'm actually not sure. I don't think this container that I'm in right now, which is my bad pod, the one that I created, I don't think it has kubectl. So I should probably grab kubectl from the internet. Yeah, and we go through that same sort of uh, methodology the same way you did with nerd CTL, right? Uh, just getting the tool that you need with wget or however you can download it, staging yeah. it so that you can use it, uh, and then start to control now with those new service tokens. Yeah, so AWS cool. AWS has one that tends to work for me really well. This one right here, for example. We need the, the Linux one. Oh, yeah, this is for Mac OS. It helps when you read the things. <laughs> cool. So once again, download kubectl. Kubectl is some... actually pretty big. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a binary. So I, I cool. learned that the hard way in a couple. <laughs> oh, true. That was yeah. such, such I want to hear that story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have kubectl. Uh, just going to make it executable. Hopefully that works. Yeah, it's executable now. So let's try kubectl, uh, for example, auth can can I list. This will give us all of the permissions that we have, and we're going to uh, get the token that we just leaked, and it should be in my paste bin somewhere. Should be this. Make sure that it doesn't have the word exit at the end. Yeah, we should be good. And hopefully this works. Oh, no, it's trying to connect to localhost. I should have prepared this a little bit, more. Give me one sec. You're good. <laughs> no worries. Let me just configure. Uh, uh, we can do it from my machine because this cluster is public. Yeah. So I'm just going to run AWS EKS kube config. So that should give me a, a valid kubectl configuration for my cluster from my machine locally. So now we can just copy this and run it from my own, my own machine and it should work. I feel like that's awesome. It's like even more damage to it like look if it's public then <laughs> yeah and you and can, we do can see here that uh we're currently our admins nice which That's is pretty wild. cool yeah. yeah nice work dude there especially were a couple breaking of bumps, out a container but... d no perfect Cool. I think that's uh, very, very cool. Streamlined little process for even more of those container breakouts, especially in light of Argo, uh, to try to make like a lot of Kubernetes uh, streamlined <laughs> and automated with CI/CD and all that. But no, dude, that's very, very cool. <laughs> are we going to do another demo now or are we splitting it? Oh, do we have another demo? Yeah. So right now <laughs> we are... We are uh, Admins in the Kubernetes cluster. This cluster has something special, though. It has a tool called Crossplane, which allows oh. us to create AWS. I believe they also support other platforms, but I mainly used it with AWS. AWS resources through Kubernetes manifests. So it's super cool. You can just have a YAML file in the same place that you have your application YAML files that creates, for example, an IAM role, a, a database in AWS, and an S3 bucket. And all of that configuration lives all together with your home chart. And it's like, you, you can, it's a template, so you can make it different for different environments. I, I think it's a really cool approach that some uh, startups are starting to, to do right now. That is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hey, let's, if you don't mind, I don't know, maybe leave a little bit of a cliffhanger uh, to see, man, what even more damage can we do? Um, but yeah, let's stage that as another demo. Thanks so much for hanging, everybody. And I'm stoked to see the finale of our uh, CICD, DevOps, Infrastructure as Code, Terraform, AWS, all of these things that we've dug into. Uh, we'll see the culmination in that last awesome demo on the next video. So thanks so much, Carlos. Thanks so much, Ignacio. And we'll catch up with you super soon. Thank you. Thank you, man.